All right, so when determining the horizontal asymptote of a rational function, we compare the degrees of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. Yes? Step number two on our sheet, correct? What are the three comparisons? Okay. So you said if the numerators. What else? What's another one? It's what? It's what? It's what? Okay, right? So if the bottom is bigger, we have one, right? And if the bottom <coughs> is the same as the top, we have one, right? Okay. It's this one over here that I want to focus in on today. When we don't have one, okay, when we don't have one. And so that is going to become, if the degree of the numerator is one degree higher than the denominator. So if it was like x cubed over x squared, or x to the fourth over x cubed, okay, then we get what's called a slant asymptote. So it's in that non-horizontal case. I can't have a horizontal asymptote and a slant asymptote on the same graph. I can only have one or the other. Because the slant asymptote only happens when I don't have a horizontal asymptote. Okay. In order to find the slant asymptote, we simply have to just do the division. We actually divide out what that, or divide out that fraction. Okay? And that will give us then what is the slant asymptote. Now, there are two ways to just do that division. One way that you could do that is you could use our old pal long division. And you could say, oh, well, then this one's x. And then this becomes x squared minus 2x. And then you change the signs. And this becomes 2x. And then you drop the 4. And then multiply by 2. And then you get 2x minus 4. And you change the signs. And you get 8. Right? That's one way. Another way is you could do synthetic division. 
you could say x minus 2 equals 0. So x equals 2. And that goes into 1, 0, and 4. 1, 2, 2, 4, 8. Yeah. Problem with synthetic division is that it only works for linear factors. Okay, so if I had x squared minus 2x plus 7 on the bottom, I couldn't use synthetic division to divide that into the numerator. Okay, so that's the downfall. That's why we learned both of those earlier this year. Okay, so first step, set up, do it. Second part to this step is you are going to drop the remainder. So over here in long division, you drop whatever's left down there. In synthetic division, you drop that last number. You will get a remainder, because if you don't get a remainder, then you had a factor. And then you should have done step number zero before you've done this, and then your whole problem changes. Okay. Okay. The last subpart of this then is we write our slant asymptote in y equals mx plus b form. And that mx plus b comes from our dividing that we just got. So in this particular case, the slant asymptote would have been y equals x plus 2. And then I graph that line as an asymptote. So it goes on and it's dashed. It goes on, and this is one of those asymptotes that we can't cross. The only asymptote that you can cross is a horizontal one. Okay? Can't cross a slant, can't cross a vertical. Okay. All right. So this should now be step number six on your a uh, resource sheet, which you can now fill in. Step number six, find uh, the slant asymptote. And now your uh, sheet, your resource guide, if you will, should be completely filled in. Because we should have all of your gaps filled in. This was the last gap that we were waiting for. So you should have something for steps 0 through 7. All right, let's do it. E, what's the domain of this particular function? Laney, what is the vertical asymptote for this particular graph? X equals 2. Okay. 
Okay, now what's next? Uh, horizontal Is there a horizontal asymptote? Nope. Why not? How many more is the degree on top bigger? One. One. So that means what? A slant. A slant asymptote, right? Okay. So when we are doing this, I put a little note, and this is just me, I put a little note that it differs by one. Because that reminds me I got to do the slant asymptote. Okay, love it. Stoner, what's next? Which one first? Okay, cause, good, because that's step number three on our sheet is the y-intercept. Yeah, what's the y-intercept of this function? I like three over two better. So would we want to write that in point form? We wouldn't. In point form. Oh, yeah. So what is it in point form? I'm talking about the point form of the y-intercept. You're talking about the decimal form of three halves. That's better. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we write it like that. Because on the on the quizzes that I corrected, some people. Julia, I know you've been away for a couple of days, but do you think that you could figure out how to do the x-intercepts? Yeah. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to set x squared minus 3 equal to 0, right? Yeah. And then what do I got to do with that? Just the square root of 3? So how many x-intercepts are there? There's two of them. And what are they? Uh, plus three. Very good. On a more informative note, do you think that we should leave it like that? Or should we write them as 1.7 comma 0 and negative 1.7 comma 0? I would leave them like this. Good guess. But when we go to the graph, then we'll use them as 1.7 and negative 1.7. Yeah, love it. Yeah. Lizzie, are you going to be offended if I scroll down just a little bit? Well, because I'm out of space. I can't write down there anymore. Yeah. Lizzie, what's the next one? Is there any holes? Are you saying that just because Abby was shaking her head no, or are you saying that because you know no? Yep, so then therefore we didn't get any holes, right? Yep, exactly. So you did know no. Guess who gets the hard one? You and Rat. Okay, so how are we going to go about finding the slant asymptote? I'm going to actually do the division, right? Okay, so now my question is, do you want to do this one synthetically, or do you want to do this one longly? If it's a linear factor on the bottom, right? Do I have a linear factor on the bottom? Yeah, yeah so we so that's why I'm giving you the choice. Wait, what would it look like if negative x squared plus 2x plus 4? Or x squared plus 4. Or you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, I would rather do synthetic. Synthetic? Okay. So if I'm gonna do synthetic rat, what do I have to do? How about I set x minus 2 and then get x equals 2? Okay, now I do that upside down L thingy. Right? And then what's gonna what am I gonna divide into? x 
and then negative 3. Love it. Okay? Do you want to drop it like it's hot? Drop it like it's hot? Okay. So 1. And then 2. And then 2. And then 4. And then 1. Awesome. Kyle, can I ask you a personal type question? Sure. Now what do I do? Just cancel out the one, right? Okay, so then what is my slant asymptote? I need two, uh, I need a letter and a word first. Y equals X plus two. Love it. Okay. CJ, are we ready to graph? You gonna go yes? I'm gonna go yes too. But first I'm gonna fix our graph. Oh yeah, that looks pretty. Alright, so CJ, what's the first thing that you wanna put onto our graph? Um, our x and our y intersects. Okay. So our y intercept would be here. Our x-intercept would be there and there. Agree? Okay, love it. Sir, what do you want to do next? What do you want to put on next? We already did green and purple. Put on the vertical asymptote. Put on the vertical asymptote. Dashed, right? Yep. All the way across our graph. Yeah. At 2. Ooh, mine's not quite at 2. i got to move that over a little bit. Well, but... Better? Okay. All right. Okay, can I ask you a personal question? How do I graph y equals x plus 2 by slant asymptote? Well, you start at 2. Because that's my? Y intercept. Exactly. And then you just go up one over one. Up I don't know. How to, I'm not familiar with over. Up one to the right one. Love it. And keep, rinse, lather, and repeat. Uh -huh. Okay. What if I don't like going up and to the right? Down Love it. Here I thought I was going to trick you, and you nailed it. Uh-oh, i got to go down a little bit. Now, follow-up question. How does the asymptote go on the graph then? Because I can't just leave those dots there. Dashed line, just like normally, yep, because it's an asymptote. Yep, so I've got to dash that line. Oops, I first I gotta pick the line, then I gotta dash the line, and then I gotta go. Like that. Oh, I down I'm off. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep, I'm off down here. There we go. Oh yeah, big time stuff. Love it. Love it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. How many points do they say you should have in each zone? Three. Three. Do I have three points in the left zone? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do, right? So I could draw in that left zone, right? Yeah. Oops, I got first got to get the marker back. Yeah? But now I gotta find points on the other side, right? Okay. Yeah. So what uh what do you want to first one you wanna try? Positive three. Positive three. Love it. Now I gotta I gotta remember. Hold on, let me Whoa! I think got all crazy right there. We're going to do it this way then. Too hard to. So it was x squared minus 3 over x minus 2, right? Yeah. Okay. Now let's just do it over here. So 3. If I put 3 into that equation, 
I get 9 minus 3, which is 6, over 1. Agree? Love it. What's the next one you want to put in? Let's do four first, because then we can get our three. We'll put in ten last. Okay? So if I put four in, that gives me 16 minus three. That's 13 all over two. Yes? Okay? If I put ten in, I'm going to scroll back up, because we might want to adjust that ten thing, right? If I put ten... Because if 6 was 2, 4, and 6 was there, and 6 and a half was right there, and so do I want to go with 10, or do I want to go with maybe 7? Okay, let's adjust that 10 to a 7. Now I get 49 minus 3 is 46, 7 minus 2 is 5, that's going to be a little bit more than 9. Naomi, is that enough to draw in that, that piece? Good, because I already drew it in. Yeah? Questions, comments, concerns, clarifications, rude comments. What's up? So we will get to one on Wednesday where we have a hole and a slant asymptote. Okay? And so you go you go off of once you factor, you go off of that factored one the rest of the way through. Yep. Okay. Awesome sauce. Let's try one on your own, one that looks maybe like that one. Love it. Excited to be part of it. Jazz, I think we're to you. Domain. X can equal two. Love that better. So that means what for our vertical asymptote? X equal two? There is none. Because why? How much bigger? One bigger. So that's a one bigger one, right? So that means what? Slant asymptote when we get there. Yep. Okay. Uh, X inter, or excuse me, Y intercepts are in. So could I write that as uh, negative 5 halves? Yeah. Okay, love it. Kiona, did you uh, find me some x-intercepts? What, can you, for the benefit of those that are watching this wonderful video on the line, could you explain to me what you did first? And what did you factor it to be? Okay. 
And then you said x minus 1 equals 0. So you had x equals 1. And you said x minus 5 equals 0. And so you got x equals 5. So then that gave you x-intercepts of... Love it. JTT. What's next? Do we have any? How come? Because what? No, it has nothing to do with horizontal asymptotes. Nothing's canceled out. Yep, nothing canceled out, so no holes. Love it. Okay? Yeah. Right? E! Sabella, guess what? We're back to you. What's next? Because we have one because there was one bigger on top, right? Okay? So how would you go about finding the slant asymptote for this one? You did synthetic because we could because it's a linear factor on the bottom. So you went x minus 2 equals 0 and got x equals 2. Yeah. Love it. And then you went 2 into what? Uh, 1 minus 6 and 5. Love it. And you got? 2 and negative 2. And I just have like non-negative things that I can't get rid of. I got 1 and 2. Oh. And negative 4 and negative 8 and negative 3. Is that what you got? Yeah. You're lying to me now. I forgot to drop the 1. You've, oh, and you multiplied it first? Yeah. Oh, man. Good thing we fixed it quick, right? Okay. Laney, now what am I going to do? Uh, so that's the, three. the negative 3 one? Yeah. Gone. Okay, so that means my slant asymptote is what, Laney? Love it. Okay? All right? Danielle, are we ready to go to the graph? Mm -hmm. No? I mean, yeah, let's go. Well, we're not because it's, it's, it's off kilter yet. See, that's why we weren't ready before. Now I think we're ready. Okay, all right. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit here now. Okay? Talk to me. What do you want to put on first? Uh, the x and y intercepts. Okay. So... Negative 5 halves is like negative 2.5, right? Yeah. Love it. 1 is like 1, right? Mm -hmm. And 5 is like 5, right? Yes. Okay. Love it. What do you want to put on next? Yeah, I'm still talking okay. to you. Oh, the, yeah, the asymptotes. So, Vertical one first? Negative 2. Negative 2? Wasn't it positive 2? It's positive 2, I was wrong. Okay. Uh, I got scared there for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Stoner. What's going on? Okay. Um, refresh my memory. How am I going to graph the line y equals x minus 4? So that's down 4 from the origin? Okay. Or down one less one. Oops, I missed. Oops, I missed. Oops, I missed. Okay. Connect them. Dash them. Love it. Julia, do we have enough points on the left zone? No, we kind of should put in one more, right? What do you want to try? 10. 10? 
Hold on. So this one was what? This was x squared minus 6x plus 5 over x minus 2. So what do you want to go to? Negative 10? That's going to be way down here. For those of you watching online, I'm pointing at like the floor. How about we try negative 6? Does that work? Okay, because I want to at least be on the graph. Okay. Negative 6 squared is 36. Minus negative 36 is 72, plus 5 is 77 over negative 8. So that's almost negative 10, right? Get it now? Tim? Okay. Right? What's up? You can put it in the factored equation all you want. So you get the exact same thing. In this case, you'd get 7 times 11. Mm -hmm. Or, excuse me, you'd get negative 7 times negative 11. But the multiplies together to be 7, 7. Yep. All right? Do we now have enough on the left one? Yes. Love it. Kohler, we're up to you. Do we have enough points on the right one? No. No, so we should probably put in... Uh, three. Three, I like three. If I put three in, I get nine. Minus 18 is negative nine. Plus five is negative four. All over three minus two, that's one. I get negative four. Do we have enough points on the left side, or right side now? Maybe one more? One more. What do you want? You can do it. How about 10? Ten? We'll do 10. Okay, what do we get when we put 10 in? 100 yeah. minus 60 45. plus 5 is 45. Yep, over? Uh, 8. 8. Yep, okay. So that's almost 6. Enough now? Yeah. Love it. Now, Miss Stone, you had remarked earlier that your graph was kind of funky. Was it this? Yes. Okay. All good? A couple of reminders. Reminder number one, uh, let's just we'll go day by day throughout this entire week. Reminder number one, tomorrow you have a formative. Okay? Reminder number two, Wednesday, the homework that was supposed to be due Wednesday is now going to push back to Thursday. If you've got it done and want to get it turned in early, that's fine. You can still turn it in on Wednesday. Thursday is going to be a review day. Friday is your test. Homework that you got at the beginning of class today, that one's due on right. I have a question. I got an answer. Now you can do them all. You tell me after today if you can do the slant asking codes on problems I'm one, two, yes. five, and eight. I'm guessing you can. You're guessing you can't. That's why you could do them before today. Wait, so if it's bigger than one, like you got to do it. You, that, that, if it's bigger than one, then you get the slant asking. You should really watch the beginning part of the video. Oh, yeah. well, if it's like x to the third power over x, you can do it. That's a quadratic asymptote. So you can. Okay. Then it, yeah, then we just call it no asymptote. So it's just one. Yeah. Mm -hmm.